Welcome everyone and happy Wednesday uh, to today's webinar. And today is the final uh, installment of our Donor Upgrade Masterclass. If you have been with us from the beginning, welcome back. If this is your first time joining in, um, we are so glad to have you. This is a really great topic we've got queued up for you today. And if you would like to go back and view the rest of the series, we have a link for you at the end. So just stay tuned all the way through the end and you'll get that information about how to view the previous installments of this series. So uh, if you have to drop early or you had a colleague who you wanted to forward this presentation to who couldn't join, no worries. Today's webinar is being recorded. Um, and we will also be sharing that recording with everyone uh, who attended today. You can also use the Q&A section on your Zoom toolbar to interact with us today. We also have a poll question. And so that will launch and take over the screen whenever we are ready to go to that poll. And then you can also use the raise your hand, the raise your hand if you have, uh, if you just kind of want to chime in and add your enthusiasm to the topic. But for most things, you should be able to use that Q and A panel for any of your questions. I am thrilled to introduce Don Galasso. Don oversees all of our uh, client and uh, client relations and sales here at Giving DNA. She is a absolute master at using um, our technology and explaining all the advanced segmentation really, really easy to consume ways um, and has quite the background of experience being at Wealth Engine uh, and some other technology platforms for fundraising. And so I really know that she's got a, uh, a great presentation for you. So Don, welcome. Thanks, Leah. Appreciate it. Those are kind words. <laughs> all right. So let's go ahead and get that poll ready for you. So we wanted to poll you guys on if you've attended some of the other webinars uh, in this in this series. Um, really, what we were trying to get an idea from you guys is: Do you think that the current technology that you have is 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 sufficient for you to personalize your donor experience based on the, some of the conversations um, that we've had over this this last series? So, just um, we'd like to just measure against your peers. Um, so just put a yes and no or a not sure, and then we'll give you a minute or two to answer that. And then we're going to dive in because we have a lot to discuss today and we have a short amount of time to do it. So Leo, if you yes. want to give another couple seconds and then. Yep, we've got about 76 uh, participation and that is good enough for me. We've got some clear answers. So I will go ahead and share those results. So it's about even. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's it's pretty even yes no and not sure and that's uh that's kind of what I hear from from most people is is that if you know you know you've got good technology and if you and if you uh you uh don't think you have good technology it may be the combination of I I, I just know I don't have it available right now and or or I'm not really sure whether I've got everything I need in place um, to really um, personalize and segment um, my donors for a, a more elegant and, and wonderful experience for them. So let's just pop in here and let's talk about the past when it comes to um, uh, major giving and upgrading, um, the idea around um, upgrading to major gifts as well as upgrading to mid-level or planned giving. Those are some of the topics we've discussed um, over the last series um, of webinars. So to kind of put this in perspective, I've been in data analytics for about a decade, as Leah mentioned, um, and um, I really think there's been a big shift in the technology needed to support major giving as well as these other upgrading categories from 10 years ago to now. So 10 years ago, um, you would have a, potentially you'd have a CRM. Hopefully, you have a CRM and you're not still um, using um, Excel spreadsheets. And you know, if you are, you know, God love you for having to work through those because I know how how uh, spreadsheets can be. But the technology stack 10 years ago was basically uh, the, our, our clients would have a CRM or a donor management system, and then they might typically screen a file for wealth to 
facilitate their major gift fundraising. And they would do it like once every couple of years. Um, and so they would not do it on a regular basis. They would only do it um, every once in a while. The data they received back was analyzed based on external data only. It wasn't internal giving data to the organization. And we're gonna kind of talk through why internal data coupled with external data is so important. Um, and so, you know, again, tr traditionally it was mostly external data that was then appended. Um, and it had you focus on high net worth individuals, obviously, for a major giving program, um, we focus on high net worth individuals. But here's the issue is, is net worth is not the only predictor for major giving. And so you really have to look at a lot of different data points that help facilitate what is what is that person who could provide you a major gift. And sometimes net worth in and of itself is not sufficient. And the, uh, the example that I like to use of that is, is that um, we've got a lot of very wealthy individuals in the United States that are your million billionaire next door that are living very simply. And so by just identifying net worth, we miss those opportunities to have great conversations with people or they have come into wealth that they didn't have before. And so their net worth belies what they really could provide to you. Because of this way of focusing and this technology that we had in the past, personalization um, was limited to a very small group of individuals. So most of our major gift officers had fairly um, small portfolios because you couldn't personalize communication with a larger group of, of individuals. But times have changed. And so I love to use the CVS example as my um, reasons why times have changed. And this is a personal example that I like to use. So when you think about all of our inboxes are bombarded, whether it's my, whether it's my, um, my text messaging, whether it's my email, whether it's even my post office box, I'm constantly getting um, solicitations from you know a million different people who want me to buy clothes from them and, and everything like that. Um, and CVS is exactly the same. But what CVS has done really, really well is they've got those little CVS cards. And now what they do is they gather data on me as a, um, as a bot, somebody who goes in and purchases from them. And now when they send me things into my inbox, they personalize the communication that I'm getting with them so that I'm receiving coupons for things that I'm going to buy. Why is that important? Because as we filter through these, these over, um, uh, um, the, these email boxes that we are just completely filled all the time. You know, I, I, I'm on my phone and I'm sliding delete on 90% of the emails. It's not that I don't buy from these places. It's that they're not giving me anything that makes it worth me opening the email. And this is the same for us in the donor world. We need to be that nonprofit that our donors and our constituents open our email on a regular basis or open our direct mail piece on a regular basis because they are getting value. And the way we accomplish this is by personalization and segmentation. The other thing that's changing, and this is a conversation that we've had over the course of the webinars, is, is that um, the whole idea is, is the is the giving pyramid dead? And so we thought we kind of chatted this through some through some of our different um, webinar series. And that's the idea that the giving pyramid was created a long time ago, and it was created upon this, this um, summation that um, your donor um, flows through your file in a very line linear basis. They start as maybe a constituent, maybe they attended an event, and then you get your first donation. And then you try to move them to a sustaining donor. And only at that point would you move them to a major donor. And then once they've reached that, that major donor status and they've aged to a certain le level, now we're going to talk to them about legacy giving. And what I would suggest is, is that that's just a flawed um, uh, approach because our donors are entering our vortex, our sphere of influence at many different places, and they can actually be at many different places of the pyramid in the exact same way, in the exact same, at the exact same time. And so the whole idea is, is a giving pyramid appropriate or is this giving vortex appropriate? Which one is right? And, and what we found is, is that the answer is they're both right, right? That, like we need to focus on the giving pyramid because we have methodology around the giving pyramid of moving people through different stages of moves management via a giving pyramid-like approach, but we also know that they are connecting with us in multiple different ways. And so what we need is technology that's in place that helps us fuel the right relationships with those donors based on where they are to us as an organization and not where we want them to be. And that's been a common theme that I've really been um, focusing on over the last um, couple of months in particular, is, is that idea that we can't expect the donor to understand 
our donor pyramid. They don't know what a donor pyramid is. And so what we need to do is we need to be having technology help us understand how our donors want to engage, when they want to engage, and about what they want to engage. And technology is the only way we can do this at scale. We can't do this with just a um, that, that old kind of giving pyramid where we had, you know, a portfolio of these the group of major donors that I know a lot about, but this whole rest of my file that I know nothing about. So really what that means is that we need to change the technology stack to be to be future forward when it comes to meeting our donors where their expectations are now versus where they were 10 years ago. So that technology stack is starting to change the what you, what you might need in the, that technology stack. And this is not, a, I need all of this right now. I want this to kind of be a walk, jog, run approach, which is you might be where you have a CRM right now and that's all you have. Um, and, and so what's the next step that you need and then the next step that you need and then the next step that you need so that you can have a fully functional tech stack that's going to support your fundraising strategy. So, you know, the tech stack of the future is a good CRM that um, stores um, constituent data and, and data that you're collecting that may be unique to your organization. And then you need data enhancements, right? So you need to understand external data points that maybe you aren't collecting, um, age and, 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 uh, and marital status and things like that that maybe you don't have access to within your file that you currently have. At this point, now you need a tool, you potentially need a tool that allows you to look at this internal and external data to understand and reveal trends and opportunities about where your donors are in relationship to you because of the behavior that they're doing within your file and then the external data that, um, that, that can be applied. Those types of things allow for you to segment and um, distribute your, con your, uh, your communications. So you need that email marketing uh, tool potentially um, as well. And then moves management would be that last step. And when we talk about moves management, I just want to kind of set the bar for what I'm talking about when it comes to moves management. And it's more about marketing automation. So, you know, the, the moves management from a major gift perspective is kind of identifying solicitation and all of these steps in the process. And while that is your, the moves management from a, from a major gift perspective, what I'm talking about with moves management is more, how do I communicate through a series of things that I'm going to do um, uh, events that I might be doing with th this person that move them closer to um, that major gift or that next gift that they um, are going to give to us. So when we talk about moves management in relation to your tech stack, it's less about that whole stewardship engagement, those things, and it's more about what are the different things that I can use from a technology perspective that double my capacity on what I uh, on what I can do. Right. So so I might only be able to send one email out to each of the people in my portfolio once a month. But if I use good technology, I could triple the amount of people that I could talk to or the number of touches that I could do because I could automate that process through great technology. So when you start to think about okay, I might want to improve my tech stack. I might want to think about some things that I want to do. What I would suggest is, is that these are five critical questions that you need to be asking when it comes to that. The first one is around budget versus ROI. And so, you know, none of these are right or wrong questions to answer. But what I would suggest is, is that when you're, when you're looking at budget versus ROI, um, you, you approach it from, instead of from a scarcity perspective, from an, uh, an idea of abundance. Again, this is kind of being talked about in the nonprofit space here for a while. And it's that idea that nonprofits for a long time have always functioned from a scarcity place just because of the nature of us always needing to raise money. And of course, most of our money is going out for our projects and services. Um, but if we could kind of think about, OK, what would be the return on each of these different technology platforms that we're looking at? And would that be valuable to us? Now we're thinking about it less from a scarcity perspective and more from you know, an idea of plenty. And how can I do more with the technology that I had that would actually enhance my mission. The other thing to think about is um, siloed data versus team collaboration. Are you and your team, do you, are your communications team and your, and your um, major gifts team and your, and your fundraising team working together, or is that data siloed? And what I would suggest is that you start to have that conversation around how can we eliminate some of these silos so that we can collaborate more effectively across the organization? What data do you already collect and is it, is it, is it consistent in your, in your database? Do you have rules around the data that you're collecting? An example 
example would be, do you have a drop down when it comes to an attribute if you're collecting um, how somebody's employed or, or what, what job title somebody has? You could, uh, if you don't have a drop down, one person could be putting in DR for doctor, somebody else could be putting in MD, somebody else could be putting in doctor. You can't query that data out in any relevant way. So thinking around data collection when it comes to your CRM. The culture of your organization. Is your organization forward thinking in the culture and, and understanding, hey, that, that our, our, the needs of our, our donors and their expectations have changed, we need to change. So what is that culture? And is that culture one that would adjust to the technology that, 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 you are, um, that you're trying to put in place? And then the last thing is what are your team's talents, right? So when you think about technology, um, we've got clients that are getting really sophisticated technology tools, things like Tableau, which is an amazing product that allows you to slice and dice data across multiple different data points. Um, um, but the problem is, is that you would need a business intelligence or a data analyst on your team to do that. So, you know, is that the right tool for you based on the talents of your team? Or do you need to find something else that maybe is built a little bit further along that gets you faster to, uh, to the answers that you need and you don't have to build that on your own? The tools should be an extension of your team. So when you think of it, you don't want that tool you that you purchase that, that technology or that tool, and that tool becomes so cumbersome that you aren't getting value out of it. You spent three months building out, you know, uh, a, a report that's a very sophisticated report, but the team doesn't know how to use it, um, and so they, so that it's never used. So really, when you're evaluating the technology that you need that you want to have, it should be everything you should be thinking of. Is this going to provide efficiencies on my team? Does this get me faster to the questions that I need answered, or to help the pain points that we have? currently with our uh, with our organization. And so again, when you're evaluating technology, that should be an, uh, a pretty important part of, of how you evaluate. So when you're thinking about it, when we talked about the kind of different technology stack we need, the first piece is always your, your CRM. And really what your CRM is, is a, is a source of data for you, right? So we like to say that almost every nonprofit now is no longer just a nonprofit, but they're actually uh, a data company as well because we collect a ton of different data. So if you're not already collecting data in the CRM, this is the first step in that walk, run, walk dog, run um, uh, theory that I'm talking about. And that is, is that at the very least, you need to be collecting data about um, who that person is to you as an organization. So those are things like their commitment to you. Like, are they are they monthly donors or are they volunteers to your organization? Um, we need to be collecting that because those data points are very relevant in uncovering different opportunities for upgrades. Things like engagement with you. Um, do they subscribe to your newsletter? Um, do they purchase something from your website? Do they fill out a survey? Again, how engaged are they with you as an organization? And then how much of a belief do they have in you? Um, do, they, um, do they share relationships or an affinity with the mission? Um, you know, will they engage with you on social media? Those are, again, different data points that we want to collect. And when you think about using a good technology stack efficiently, it comes with a combination of internal quality data that you guys collect as an organization, great external data that can be appended, that can be now reviewed as a whole, internal and external data combined to be reviewed as a whole, and then what do I do next in that moves management, that automation that allows me to create these better relationships with my donors that I've identified are the right category. So from a data perspective, as I mentioned before, um, there are certain things that are a bare necessity. You need to have clean database. You need to um, make sure your database is deduped and that you can query easily in your database. And this is one of the things that I find most of our clients, the biggest challenge they have is around getting their data out, is getting their data out in a way that is um, actionable for them. Um, you, you, you should have mission-related data. So we talked about that on the prior screen. You should have gender, age, and communication preferences. Why are these important? Um, age, I'll just use age as, a, as an example. People on different ages now, they expect their salutations to look different depending on what their age is. If you don't have age and you're sending a mass email or a mass direct mail piece out, you potentially, if you put Mr. and Mrs. on it, 
part of your file is going to be irritated that you included Mr. and Mrs. If you leave it off, part of your file is going to be irritated that you left it off. So you need to understand and be able to segment on these groups um, so that just in normal communications, you're, you're appealing to the largest group of your audience. Um, it's great to have overlaid data like wealth, giving preferences, discretionary spending. Do they have children in the home? And when it's really optimal, that data set that you're having is being combined and allowing you to look at that combination of data to predict those next major gift um, prospects, as well as plan giving prospects or just general upgrades. So when we're thinking about this, and if you've been with us through this series, um, one of the things that we had we talked about is, is that it's nearly impossible to do everything well at one time. So what we would suggest is, is that you might pick one or two of these that, that, uh, that you would focus on going forward as you're evaluating a technology and stack. Do you need to improve segmentation and personalization? Well, you might not need um, a, a, a marketing automation or an email automation for that, but you do need age, as I mentioned before, potentially to, to help with that segmentation and personalization. Can I identify those donors that are upgrading? And if not, if I, if I can't, what kind of data do I need? Who can I get that data from that I can identify more of those donors that have maybe a higher capacity or maybe they're giving to organizations similar to mine, but they're not giving to me at that same level? Who loves my organization and could be a great planned gift um, prospect? Um, this is a combination of internal data, again, and external data. Things like, um, uh, is this person a monthly giver over the, over the last 10 years or have they written eight checks over the last, 10, last decade? And then what's their age group? And we're going to look at the a couple of other ones that are fun to look at from a data perspective as well. And then, you know, do you do you want to build out your major, your mid-level or your major gift um, programs? You really need to understand your donors' passions, their discretionary um, spending, and their philanthropic tendencies if you really want to build that great relationship with them. Um, so from a technology perspective, the bare necessity is a CRM as opposed to Excel spreadsheets. Um, must have, you need a personalized approach to outreach. So even if it's only, I know what these people's ages are, so I'm going to adjust my salutations based on that, and then collecting that internal first party data. It's great to have a vendor append external um, data. It allows for predictive analytics based on that external data, an email marketing tool that allows you to send out a series of emails, and then communi understanding communication preferences can be very, very important in understanding when to email a direct mail or pick up the phone. And then optimal, you're kind of combining all of these things together. You've got a, uh, you've got data, um, um, a data visualization tool that takes internal data and takes augmented external data and, and applies intelligence over it to tell you what's the next steps that you should do with these different segments. And then that great moves management tool or email cadence tool that allows you to build um, cadence is at scale so that you can focus on many more individuals than you potentially currently could otherwise. So, you know, again, just to kind of tie the loop on that, it's about that CRM, the, the, the good data that you're collecting in the CRM, then appending and just adjusting and visualizing data, and then creating that outbound strategy that's going to allow you to scale your major gift um, program or your mid-level plan giving program or any of your upgrade program. So I did a fun thing with a couple of different um, ideas that we had spoken about on the prior, some of our prior calls. So when I talk about segmenting your audience, what does that look like? And so what we wanted to do is kind of descriptively show you what that looks like on your file. And basically I'm taking this large audience, which is my file. And for my upgrade list, I'm gonna send them out a newsletter. So what I wanna do is I wanna identify those individuals that are currently giving lower amounts but they give higher support to similar philanthropy and they respond digitally because I'm sending out an email or a newsletter. So again, you can get some of this out of your file, but really when you're using the right technology, you could quickly get this information with just a series of clicks. Grab those individuals that are currently giving to us at low levels, supporting philanthropy at um, external philanthropy that's similar to ours at higher levels, and they respond digitally and I'm gonna send them an email, uh, an email series or an email newsletter with the idea being that they are going to convert much faster. And so in giving DNA, it's super simple. You just look at it here. I can just pull this list and we literally will give you, um, uh, uh, we, we look at all of that data behind the scene, capture it behind the scene, uh, and then we provide that information to you so that you can now take that group and you can just send them all an upgraded appeal. Or I, again, might send them an email newsletter if I identified that digital um, communication preference as the one that they would have. 
You know, another one would be plan giving. So a lot of our, uh, we talked about plan giving a little bit and, you know, I like this group. I think this is a really fun group, plan giving for annuities, right? We typically have different plan giving strategies. Who do I focus on for, for an annuity? Well, I'm going to take my same file and I'm going to look at people who are our fans. They're giving to us frequently. They gave to us recently. They're committed to us uh, as an organization. I'm then going to overlay age. For this particular group, I'm going to focus on over 65 because an annuity provides income come back to the person who gives you that gift. And so over 65, I, I know that that person is more likely to be on a fixed income. So that group would be identified as somebody that was interested uh, potentially in getting uh, income back. And then of course, um, maybe they have low discre discretionary spending. They don't have a lot of money left or after they pay their bills. So they would be ideal to talk to about an annuity because an annuity is a win-win. They give us money we get to use, they get income back on a monthly basis. And again, we can get a lot of this data out in, in giving DNA, and it's just is super easy um, to be able to provide that to you. And I'm moving through here a little quick just because we're running a little short on time. And then another one, which is fun, and this is again for your major gift um, portfolio optimization. So um, how do I optimize portfolios using good technology? With a product like Giving DNA, what we can do is we can take your file, we can identify those individuals with higher capacity, filter on things like net worth or salary, um, look at people who are already giving to organizations like ours, and that maybe have not written us a big check yet. And then the last thing I want to make sure is that they're not already assigned to somebody else's portfolio. So you could probably get some of this data out of your current system, but using great technology like giving DNA, we can get this out for you really, really fast. And so we can say, hey, this is a group of individuals um, that, that are the best um, qualified. And so when we are managing our major gift officers, we're looking at things like how are they doing um, to goal um, for this year? What is their... Um, uh, retention to goal this year. Why are we looking at things like that? Because things like that are going to identify um, opportunities for teaching moments, right? Like if somebody's at goal, but their their retention is, is way below goal, did they maybe receive just one gift from somebody that was a really big gift and they kind of coasted since then, so their retention is suffering? Can you get that data out of your current technology stack? And if not, you should be using good technology to identify that. And then once you've identified that you have these challenges, the next thing you need to do is you need to go and say, okay, well, uh, Kristen, we need to optimize your portfolio. Let's pull some of these people that are um, not giving at the levels they need to out of your portfolio. And then let's grab those individuals that we identified two of the screens before that were people that weren't already in portfolio, but had high capacity, had high net worth, um, and, and but hadn't been giving to us at that level. And let's move some of them in for portfolio optimization. So <clears throat> Really, again, just to kind of circle back around, when you when it look when you're looking at the tech stack, it really needs to start with your CRM, and then you need to be grabbing data, either internal data, and then the, depending that external data, and really the value going forward is 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 um, combining those two, not leaving them siloed, but combining the internal data that you collect with that external data, and then using artificial intelligence to model those opportunities and provide you segments for uh, suggested segments for major gift philanthropy versus your good, best plan giver. And then really use a good moves management slash uh, uh, marketing automation tool. We don't specialize in marketing automation, but I wanted to bring this to you just to kind of um, finalize this. There's a lot of great tools in the nonprofit space out there um, that you can use for this. Anything from a CRM like Virtuous, that's that's amazing for um, for full uh, you know full um, CRM to moves management. HubSpot does does something similar. Two two other things that just are doing email um, versus those cadences. And so for cadences, it's like okay, I'm going to send them an email and then I'm going to pick up the phone a week from now and, and call them. And then I'm going to send them another email and then I'm going to make sure they get the newsletter. And then if they do something, I'm going to do this next step in the process. And that's what I mean by moves management when it comes to our philosophy around this cadence building that I can now do at scale. I can now reach many more people using the right technology and identifying the right people. So those conversion ratio rates should, should really... Um, uh, be a lot better because I'm using um, the right segmentation to talk to the right audience at the right time. So with that, we have a couple minutes left for Q&A. 
Thank you, Don. Um, just looking at the questions now, um, we had a, a nice comment from Priya who just wanted to compliment the presentation and the useful information. Um, so you Thank are you. very welcome. Priya? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> so if we don't have any questions, you can always flip us some questions later as you think about it. We're going to be sending this out, uh, this deck out. So uh, if you have any questions in the in the and the, um, the recorded webinar. Um, uh, obviously, if you're interested, if anything's piqued your interest about giving um, DNA, you can, you can schedule a demo with us. Um, and then also, um, Leah was great enough to um, provide us a QR code. If you missed any of the previous webinars or me talking about the previous webinars um, piqued some interest, feel free just to grab that QR code. Um, all of the webinars are on a series on demand and we've had great response to them. So, um, you know, feel free to, to, to grab those. Um, and Leah, was there anything else you wanted to address before we hang up? Yes, yes. So um, as, as Don said, you can grab all the previous webinar recordings at that link. Um, we will also be sending out an email tomorrow that has the recording for this webinar and that this link in it. And then um, it's also going to include something really important. So I want people to pay attention is we're going to include a uh, feedback question. So we have been uh, focusing on mid-level for this entire quarter, and we would just love to know what else are you interested in? Um, and so if you could pay attention for and look out for that email and just give us your feedback about what other topics you are focusing on and uh, kind of have your attention in 2022, we would really appreciate that. So keep your eyes peeled for it. Super important because we don't want to be doing these these series on things that you guys don't find interesting. So you informing us is going to make a huge difference in in what we deliver to you. Yes, um, but without any, there's no further questions. Uh, we have no more further comments for you. So um, if it's your lunch hour, you can uh, go grab that lunch and get ready for the rest of your day. Thank you.